memory thanks to another convincing win last night. Seattle's now won eight of nine. Franchise record 596 yards of offense, including beast mode. Another ridiculous touchdown run by Marshawn Lynch. This was against Arizona's stout defense, no less. Seattle now controls its own playoff destiny, can lock up the one seed and home field. So, gentlemen, is Seattle a lock to win the NFC? Stephen A., in this league, you, you hate to say something is a lock or that it's over, but if there were ever a lock with a week left in the regular season, it's this team at home. From what I saw last night at Arizona, against, as Doug points out, one of the best defenses in the National Football League, Seattle rang up a franchise record 596 yards against that defense in that building where that team was undefeated, where the Super Bowl will be hosted. And that team, with Arizona, playing for a chance to clinch home field and got blown off its own field, not so much by Seattle's defense. We knew that was going to happen against Ryan Lindley, but by Seattle's offense. Do you realize that Russell Wilson is now ranked 15th in the NFL in rushing, in rushing. And among those who qualify for the rushing stats, he has easily the highest average per carry at 7.5 yards per carry, thanks in part to last night's 55-yard burst. Stephen A., I had no idea when I watched this kid at Wisconsin and North Carolina State, he can accelerate like that. I had no idea he was that fast downfield. I don't know if anybody is quicker out of the blocks in the National Football League than Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. Spinning out of the blocks or breaking upfield through one, another one of Arizona's ill-timed, ill-fated blitzes. Okay. I've never seen anything quite like this. And now all of a sudden, he's discovered a new toy. Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson. Hey, Luke Wilson can fly, man. Former baseball player from Canada. 6'5", 250. He's, he's fast, one of the fastest hey, tight ends in the game. He's got to be because he outran the safeties on the first touchdown pass. Mm -hmm. I thought they had a step on him, and he pulled away from both the safeties. And I'm saying, now you've even got him on your side? And I'm thinking, you've got the number one defense. We know that. And by the way, Ryan Lindley had two chances to make it a game. They got it down in close to the goal line mm -hmm. and came to two third downs. One was a false start, which killed him. And then Ryan Lindley mm -hmm. lost the snap for a second fumbled it through an incompletion. That was, They had two chances, and that was that. And then the exclamation point came from beast mode again. He was allegedly, reportedly sick before the game. I don't know what was going on with him. You never know. But you want to talk about a sick run? The capper was a sick run. Even the goal line run was a sick run to me, where he slammed it across the goal line. So I'm thinking... All they have to do is now go home and beat St. Louis, and they wrap up home field through the NFC play. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry. From what I saw, especially on offense last night, Russell Wilson throwing for 339. Wow. And running for 88. I, I'm saying that's just too good. They, like Dallas, have peaked. My final caveat to this. Mm -hmm. My Cowboys did win at Seattle mm -hmm. when you least expected it. Yeah. If they were forced to go to Seattle, I think they would go up there with a lot of confidence. Do I think they're good enough to win the game now up there? Probably not. But I would give them a shot because, as I recall, maybe two, three weeks ago on this show, mm -hmm. you brought up the fact, hey, if it ever came to Dallas at Seattle, that you would like the Cowboys' chance. or You, you would give them a shot, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, here's the deal. <clears throat> I'm not going to be as, def and I'm not saying that you were definitive. I'm just not going to go as far um, as you did in terms of saying that, you know, I like what I'm seeing from Seattle. Please don't get me wrong. And I told you when I saw them in Philadelphia a couple of weeks ago that they weren't going to lose another regular season game. This was it. Myself and Sal Palantonio, Sal Palantonio, my man, yeah. was kind enough to bring me on the field with him. And we were, we were on the Seattle, we were on the sideline with the Seattle Seahawks. And, um... We were talking and said, I was like, nobody's going to beat these guys. And I totally agree with them. You're talking about the regular season. Yeah. Yesterday didn't mean much to me, Skip, because I didn't consider it as much of a blowout as the score would indicate. I mean, they were up like 20 to 3 or whatever the case may be. Um, and then they, I, I'm sorry, it, 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 I, I get it. It was pretty much, they were running away with it. But I guess what I'm saying is, 
I had the experience of having to cover the game with Lindley quarterback for Arizona against the Jets a couple of years ago. Yep. And I was there in person, and I thought it was the most awful performance that I have ever seen by a quarterback in my history of watching the NFL. That is how bad he was that day. I don't care how much he improved. You got a long way to go from what I saw a couple of years ago. I was shocked he was even in the NFL. That's how bad it was. And I thought that somebody owed Larry Fitzgerald a public apology for being a wide receiver and putting him out there on the field, like, like it, pretending that passes were going to get thrown to him when there was no way in hell they were going to get to him because this boy couldn't throw it. This is that simple. And yesterday, him going up against Seattle, it's like that's just too much to put this dude through because you just ain't good enough. You ain't ready for this kind of encounter. When you have an offense that a quarterback that is that awful, who completed 41% of his passes yesterday, and that was actually an improvement, okay? When you have a quarterback that clearly is incapable of doing anything for you, that is going to demoralize a defense. I looked at the run by beast mode. I mean, just running, just shoving, you know, <laughs> you know Patrick Peterson aside yep. and then running over Jones, okay? Yep. We saw all of that. But what this comes down to is that Luke Wilson looks like he can be special. Yeah, okay? I agree. You look at him, this kid Paul Richardson is not slouchy, okay? So I look at that, and, of course, Baldwin can play. And, by the way, he had seven receptions for 113 yards yesterday. Mm -hmm. Skip, when I was in that locker room when they played Philly, these receivers is two components, and I found this very interesting. The Legion of Boom is the Legion of Boom. They are who they are, and they have this desire to live up to their reputation, okay? Well, you know, it, it, it's Chancellor and Wagner and, 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 you know, Richard Sherman and those boys. They got their own swag about them, and they understand what comes with it in terms of expectations, and they want to live up to that. But what I find very interesting, and I dare say brilliant about Pete Carroll, is that he doesn't mind these clicks because he understands that inspires them to play great football. You've got two units that are incredibly hungry for their own shine. Doug Baldwin, who I spoke to extensively, yep. and, of and, and, and that wide receivers, and Avril and Bennett and those boys in the defensive line. So if you've got a team that's already Super Bowl champions and their mantra is the Legion of Boom and this is who we are, blah, blah, blah. But you literally have two components within that, within that team that are starving for their own recognition, their own shine, like the defensive line, like the wide receivers. And then you couple that with Russell Wilson being who he is and playing ball the way he's playing ball, extending plays, picking people apart, just making y'all, you should be allergic to trying to blitz this boy right now the way that he's playing. And you combine that with beast mode, Marshawn Lynch, and what he brings to the table, they look unbeatable. The problem is this. If you can run the football on them, it changes everything. And who amongst us, who that's watched this NFL season, are remotely qualified to sit there and deny that DeMarco Murray, if he's on the field, can you definitively say you're going to stop him? I don't know if anybody can say that. Not the way this brother runs the football right now. And so for me, that makes it very, very interesting. Would I bet against Seattle? No. But I would repeat and reiterate my point to you that right now, the way it looks, Dallas usurps Detroit, Dallas usurps Green Bay as the team that is most likely to take out Seattle mm. if there was a team that was going to do it. I'm not saying they would because I would pick Seattle. In Seattle, I would I certainly would have picked the Dallas Cowboys to roll up in Seattle and beat them twice. But I will acknowledge and confess to you that right now it looks like the Dallas Cowboys have the best shot to knock them mm -hmm. off than anybody else in the NFC. OK, I'm just projecting here and this is probably wrong because I'm just shooting in the dark here mm -hmm. a little bit about what could happen. Mm -hmm. But my best guess right now is Detroit would wind up in Dallas for the first playoff game mm -hmm. and that the Cowboys will not have a week off, that they won't have the bye well, week, okay? My position yeah. is 
Green Bay, I don't believe, and I've said this weeks ago, Green Bay's only shot to beat Seattle is if they got Seattle to Green Bay. Losing that regular season game to Buffalo last week okay. hurt them immensely. Killed. And I thought that it yep. killed their chance to get to the Super Bowl. Yep. But I believe that Green Bay, whether it be in Lambeau Field or Dallas, I believe that Green Bay could beat Dallas. But I think that Dallas has a better shot than Green Bay of beating Seattle. Okay. Gotcha. Well, if, if I'm right about Detroit at Dallas, and let's just say for the sake of argument, though I remember a game about three years ago that Cowboys were up, I think, 27-3 to on Detroit and Matthew Stafford, who's from Dallas, yeah, the and blew it game. and blew it. Remember that one? Oh, what a collapse yes. that was. Okay, but let's just say for sake of argument, Dallas wins that game then I'm pretty sure Dallas is going to go to Seattle. So we may get to see this. That would be a heck of a well, contest. Well, it would be because, Don, if we're watching football, if we notice what we're watching, Dallas has the best shot in the NFC of knocking off Seattle. But Dallas could lose to Green Bay because Aaron Rodgers would be their kryptonite for that secondary. Yeah, especially at Lambeau. Yes. Oh, I, I, I wouldn't give him yes. a shot. And how about Seattle? The last nine teams to play the Seahawks? <laughs> have lost the following week. Yeah. Just banged up, takes everything well, out they, of you. They did in the Eagles, I'll tell you that. All right. How about Ooh. the AFC?